Matthew. Please. Please. Come on, babe. Come on. Did the doorbell wake him? No, he's been crying like this ever since I got off work an hour ago. <sighs> My second one had colic. Oh, I thought I'd never make it, but somehow you do. Oh. Oh. But today's your lucky day. You've won a free makeover. Oh, is this from that questionnaire I filled out at the mall? That's right, but if now's a bad time. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, geez, I've never won anything before. A makeover, huh? Oh, well, come on in. Yes. Yes. At that age, they can be so demanding, can't they? Oh, yeah. But, honey, it's worth it, isn't it? Of course it is. Now, with a little bit of water, I can mix these two shades and come up with something real nice. Just a bit in the cup, okay? Oh, yeah. What does your husband do? Oh, don't have one. It's just me and my mom. She helps with Matthew uh, while I work. But uh, she's got a doctor's appointment today, so... This is Matthew? Yes, that was taken three months ago. I can't believe you just let her in. She said I had won a contest. And you fell for that? Denise, Mrs. Bradford. I had filled out some card. How did I know that she wasn't who she said she was? You didn't ask her to prove it? This is not productive. We have to move quickly. I need to ask some questions. Mrs. Bradford, could you find a more current photo of your grandson? Also, the hospital papers. So we'll have the footprint, the blood type. I'd have to dig for it. Then dig. Please. Denise, can you think of anyone who would want to hurt you by taking Matthew, his father, an old boyfriend, maybe? A jealous girlfriend of a guy you see. Maddie's father was long gone before he was even born. And I don't have that many friends, let alone enemies. How could I have let her in? Denise, I know this is hard, but you have to concentrate. Have you ever seen this woman before? No. Think now, when you were shopping or at work or coming home from work, was anyone ever following you? I don't know. Uh, a face you might remember from two places. It might not even be this woman. It might be someone who was following you for her. I know I should have known better, but Maddie was just being so fussy, and she just seemed so nice.
This is a soy-based formula. Does Matthew have a lactose intolerance? Yes. He gets sick if he has milk. He has a really bad allergic reaction. <laughs> Vomiting and <laughs> diarrhea. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. She doesn't know she's going to give him milk. <laughs> Could the illness be life-threatening? If she keeps giving him milk, he'll dehydrate it in a couple of days. <laughs> all right. It's all right. <laughs> She's got a 90-minute jump on us. And for the next day and a half, nothing else matters. If you had plans, you don't have them anymore. We're all doing double shifts. The odds of finding a kidnapped victim drop like a rock after 30 hours. On top of that, Dr. Huizenga says that Matthew could die of dehydration in the same amount of time. So speed is critical. Some of you will man an 800 hotline number. That's a national hookup. Sid, I want you to head up the search team. Uh, Sid. Boss, Sid's in Rhode Island with her family. Ah. Uh, OK. Uh, the suspect's female, in her 40s, red hair, matronly. So keep your eyes open. She doesn't look like some maniac who's going to stick out in a crowd. Uh, look, this is a case for second sight. So don't shrug off y y your hunches. And let's talk it up between us. This is a team effort. Any questions? Go. Boss, Mrs. Scally. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, hi, Tony. Listen, Mr. Hurst can't drive Tommy and David to the bus station tomorrow for the school trip to Washington. Wants to know if you could do it. I don't think I'm even going to make it home tonight. How come? We got a kidnapping, a baby, six months old. Where was the mother? Right there with him. She just took her eyes off him for a second. God, how could she let him out of her sight? The baby was abducted from the living room. The mother should have the right to feel safe in her own home. Look, honey, I have to go. We're chasing the clock on this. Yeah. Well, call me when you can. Kiss the kids for me. Hey, Mom, do you think it's walking distance from the Smithsonian Institution to the Lincoln Memorial? What's the matter? Hotline, East Bridge PD. This child was in a stroller left unattended. Where was this? Can you tell me exactly where in Cochrane Park? Send an officer right away. Have we heard anything from the bus station? Not yet. this morning from his home in the Oak Hill area. The suspect is a female Caucasian, red hair, and approximately 38 years old. If you have any information as to the child or suspect's whereabouts, contact the Eastbridge Police Department at 1-800-1555-LOST. Yeah, we have been going all day. I am stopped. Hi, can I help you? Yeah. First off, have you seen this woman or this child at all today? No, sir. Not that I remember. Will that be for here to go? Let's go. Here. We don't have time to stop anymore. The boss has said repeatedly that you can't take seven in a moving patrol car. This is an emergency situation. Sight who's going to know. You say that now. And then we're eating while we're driving. We get into a high-speed pursuit. Bada-bing. Secret sauce all down the front of our uniforms. Then they'll know. All right. We in the parked patrol car. This is to go. Uh, I'll have a chicken sandwich, uh, onion rings, a uh, piece of apple pie, a little ice cream, not too much, and a uh, fudge bar, and a large Diet Cola. Uh, put it on his tab. Yo, Jeff, you're up. I'm going to get a tofu burger with extra sprouts. You know, 
I used to see those parents, you know, would have the kids on a leash like they're a poodle or something. I think, come on, you're gonna give the kid a complex. But nowadays, geez, with my own kids, I... Hey, where are you going? I think I saw her going to the restroom when she had long blonde hair. Police officer. This is uh, Mr. Dockett, he's the manager. Uh, boss? You mean the commish? Wow. C1. Must be something pretty big going down. What are we talking here, guys? A 1019, a 411? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's got to be a 1017. What do you guys got? Uh, Mike and I tracked a suspect here. Now, Mr. Dockett says she checked in yesterday alone. Then he saw her with a baby earlier today. Yeah, she registered in room 12 under the name Deborah Smith. <laughs> Deborah Smith. Some alias, huh, boss? Mr. Doctor, could you open this door for us, please? I've waited my whole life for this moment. She may have left in a hurry, but she didn't leave much behind. Excuse me. Suspect negotiated eight calls here. Call the last number first. ISL bus schedule. here. I thought you two were here all day. Uh, yes, sir. Then how did she get by you? Sir, I swear we checked every infant we saw. Maybe she smuggled them out in a bag. I remember that, though. I saw her within the last hour. Which bus is left here in the last hour? Uh, a, a 130 to Toronto, a 140 to Milwaukee, and a 2 o'clock to Baltimore. All right, Papa Doctor, Jarrett, take off after the 140. Now, go! Hastings, Tanzini, you chase down the 2 o'clock. My gut says the border. Call ahead. See if the state troopers can help us intercept this bus. Let's go. Forever. No, we won't.
What's going on? Eastbridge Police. and a baby off between here and Eastbridge? Yeah, back in Willowcrest. Well, that's not a scheduled stop. No, but the lady wanted off and I was happy to oblige. Her kid cried all the way from Eastbridge. Seemed like he was sick. Right, she was headed for Toronto and she got off here. I just hope to God she didn't abandon the baby because he's sick. All right, uh, we've coordinated with Willowcrest PD. They've got their assignments. We'll work in a spiral pattern. Um, Gordy, Cooper, you start on the south side of town, then circle back to here. Uh, Rose, Hartley, you do the same thing, starting on the north side of town. Stan and I will work from here. All right, keep your eyes open, be alert. Any leads, call them in. Let's go. Excuse me, ma'am, have you seen either of these two people? Excuse me, sir, have you seen either of these two people? seen this lady around? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know her. Hey, can you tell me where she lives? Is she gonna get in trouble? You will if you don't tell us. Okay, follow me. C1, this is X-Ray 7. Boss, I think we found her. Which one is it? That house. She lives right there. Okay, you boys stay here. Gordy, Cooper, take the back. You guys come with me. Remember, the baby's more important than anything. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Damn it. Sonny Matthew? He's not here. All that's here is a mountain of blank videotapes and machines for pirating movies. All right! Yeah! <laughs> You're busted, you rip-off! Yeah, I paid 10 bucks for Home Alone 2 and the tracking was all screwed up! Hey! You think this is funny? Huh? We're sorry! We're sorry! Our baby might be dead because you wasted police time! She's a video pirate! Isn't that a crime? You deliberately misled a police investigation! Boss, boss, easy. Get out of here. All right, we'll let the Willowcrest guys take care of her. Let's continue the search. Crayons anywhere? I haven't seen you use those in years. I think I left them in here somewhere. David, can I talk to you? Here they are. It's about you going away to Washington. Sure, Mom. That's why I need the crayons. You know Mr. Simonson down the street? Well, he had a nephew who got killed in Vietnam, and he wants me to go to the wall and make a rubbing of the name. It's nice of you to do that for him. I'm going to make one for myself, too. I never knew anyone who died in a war. David, what if your father and I took you to Washington this summer? You mean so I could show you all the things I see? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could see all those things for the first time together? 
But I would have already seen them. Yeah. Well, maybe you shouldn't go tomorrow. But you guys already said I could. David, there are parts of that city that are very, very dangerous. Mom, this is a school trip. Uh, there's gonna be parents and teachers watching us. I know, but even when people are watching, things can happen. I worked hard for this. If you don't let me go, you're breaking a promise. I just don't want you to get hurt. David. Hi. Uh, could you do us a favor? Could you put one of these in your window and uh, another one on your counter? Sure. Thank you. Something in the picture ring a bell? There was a woman in here with a kid. Real rushed. That's how I remember. Should have been in the last couple of hours. I get a lot of folks in here. Couldn't say for sure. Is that a 24-hour loop? Tell me when. There. Now I remember. Nothing could shut that kid up. Screamed the whole time he was here. Oh, my God. She's buying milk. We have solid evidence that the woman was in a convenience store in Willow Crest about three hours ago. She had Matthew. Did he look OK? I'm not going to lie to you, Denise. She's been giving him milk. You're not doing enough. You should have every cop and then some out looking for our boy. Mother, please. They're doing all they can. Well, then why isn't he back home by now? He will be. Every officer on this force has put everything aside to find your grandson. Everything. Their own lives, their own families. We will find him and bring him back. We'll leave an officer with you. And I'll be in my office all night. If you hear anything, or if you just need someone to talk to. I know you're doing all you can. Thanks, Denise. Good night, Mrs. Bradford. Boss, I apologize. I got way out of line. It's just that, that woman was acting, you know, like we were the ones who kidnapped the kid. And I'm sorry. I'm glad you saved the city from a lawsuit. If you hadn't spoken up, I think I might have clocked to myself. <laughs> Come on, we got a long night ahead. Hotline. East Bridge PD. Hotline. Can you tell me the exact location? Hotline. East Bridge PD. Don't you eat that. <sighs> Not when there's all this good hot food. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it smells incredible. See this woman, Clark. <laughs> she must get a lot of practice being married to the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I, double sip made me delirious. Make sure you get some of them meatballs. Squisito. Hey. Hey, come here. Let me put some sauce on that. Susan made it. It's delicious. And nothing came of it? No further leads? Uh, OK. No, thanks, Bill. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, we've had 300 calls today. Not one has led us to math. Well, why don't you change your clothes? Jeff probably put them in the locker room. Rachel, thanks. You picked up everyone's spirits. Well, maybe you can pick up mine. What's wrong? I told David he couldn't go tomorrow. I thought he looked upset. Why'd you tell him that? He's just... He's too young to be going off by himself. 
He's with the school. Lou Denuzio is one of the parents that's going. When I was David's age, my class went to Gettysburg. Yeah, well, when you were his age, people weren't stealing children from their own homes. The whole world was a safer place. Back in 1966, our parents were saying the world was a safer place back in 1936. What are you gonna do? Keep him with us. Forever? Rachel, we can't make David a prisoner of our fear. I mean, I, I hope he's the kind of kid who will grow up and make things better so we won't have to tell his children the world was a safer place when he was a kid back in 1993. Boss, we got something you should look at. Honey, the whole time he's gone, I'm gonna be pulling what's left of my hair out. But we gotta let him go. Okay, the FBI told us they checked out 12 infant kidnappings over the past three years, all within this 200-mile radius. There have been three in the last six months, including Matthew. Yeah. Nine out of 12 came from single-parent, low-income homes. Like Denise Bradford. Mm -hmm. All right, Gordy, check the report. See if the other victims had anything else in common with Denise Hotline. Bradford. Uh, uh, a pediatrician, an OB, uh, medical clinic. Right. Sir. Yeah. An all-night pharmacist from Willowcrest just ID'd the lady from the sketch. Well, it rains, of course. Willowcrest PD dispatched a car, but they got there too late. She'd already gone. She did fill a prescription for Fenerol, a vomiting suppressant. It was made up by Dr. Benjamin Jacobs. Let's pay the doctor a house call. I don't know anything about this. It clearly was issued without my consent. Well, who else would have access to your prescription pad? My nurse, but she's been on vacation. And there's Mary Potter, our nurse's aide, but she's been out sick this week. What about someone from the pharmacy? Tell me about Mary Potter. Mary's worked in her office, oh, a little over a year. When she came to us, she was a little lost. Lost? Her husband and child died in a car accident. She moved here to get away. And I think the work has helped her a little. Woman loses a child, falls into a chronic depression, kidnaps a baby to replace the one she lost. Wouldn't be the first time it happened. Oh, it couldn't be Mary. She's a sweet woman. She volunteers all her time at the free clinic, working with lower-income families. Where can I find her? You know, babies can't be on Fenerol. Ongoing doses can cause neurological damage. Let me see your light. Looks like no one's here. Hey, Stanley. Mary Potter's baby died a year ago. What's she doing with all this baby stuff? Let's go. Don't we need a warrant? No. It's a matter of public safety. We have justifiable cause from visual observation to go inside. Ready? in the, in the nursery. Ah, now we need a warrant. But you said... If it's not in plain sight, we need a warrant. <sighs> Looks like she's been feeding them Fenerol like it was water. It must be really sick. Hey, boss. Come over here. Look at this drawer. There's Jacob's prescription pad. 
Maybe there's something in there we can use. Oh. That's plain sight to me. No. If we open that drawer, then nail her with information we find, we blow any chance of a conviction. We need to get a warrant. It'll take an hour just to wake a judge. What the hell am I thinking about? Finding the kid is more important than making the case. There's a phone number. the offices of Jason Stevens, attorney at law, specializing in areas of adoption and family law. If you would... This is a nursery. This is a holding pen for babies on the black market. David? Wake up. Come on, you're gonna be late. It's a teacher's conference day. We don't have any school today. No, I meant you're going to be late for your trip. Mrs. DeMarco's going to take you to the bus station in half an hour. Really? You mean I can go? Yeah. <laughs> David. I want to apologize. I know you probably can't understand right now, but sometimes it's exciting for a mom to see a little boy growing up. And sometimes it's kind of sad. But the way that I dealt with it by trying to keep you from growing up, that was wrong. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to worry about you, so you be careful, OK? Yeah, Mom. Thanks. You want me to bring you back something from Washington? Surprise me. Okay, Ricky, nobody's reported any sign of Mary Potter. So stay out of sight, and if she shows up at her house, I want you waiting for her. Jason Stevens should be getting to his office soon. I'd like the honor of bringing him in. Well, if we bring him in now, chances are he'll deny everything and get himself a lawyer. By that time, Matthew will be dead. So, our only choice is to get Stevens to hand us Matthew himself. You mean, sting him? Boss, we don't have enough time. We'd have to get there today. How are we gonna do that? Package for you, boss. Oh, right. Thanks, Calvin. Hey, Stan. How's about making a delivery across town? H-I-J-K-L. Let me go. I was here already. Uh, well, I'm here now. Okay. I'll sign for it. Uh, gotta have, um, Mr. Stevens' signature. But the other guy always lets me sign. Do I look like the other guy? Okay, give it to me. You sure this was a first-time appointment? Yeah, it said introductory on the calendar. Mr. and Mrs. Harrison. Good job, Stan. Go wash your hand. <sighs> Commissioner, I don't want to be rude, but we have a meeting with Jason Stevens in less than an hour that we've been waiting months for. What's this about? Mr. Harrison, did anyone ever suggest that you could get special services from Mr. Stevens? What do you mean? Did you go to Stevens because you knew he could get you a baby faster than by legal means? No, of course not. Jason Stevens is a wonderful man. He makes dreams come true. Oh, my suspicion is he creates nightmares. A baby boy was recently taken from his mother. We have reason to believe that Jason Stevens will deal him on the black market. If what you're saying is true, Commissioner Scali, how can we help? I'm sorry I couldn't have seen you sooner. So, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison, you're ready to start a family? Yeah. Uh, when Christine and I got married, I, I promised to the world, uh, so far I've pretty much come through. We have a house, a couple of nice cars, and because of this little infertility problem, the only thing that's missing is a baby. Well, this meeting's the first step. 
I'm going to explain how adoption works. I'll walk you through the ads, the agencies. And with luck, within a year, you'll have a baby. A year. Look, Mr. Stevens, uh, I don't know any other way to say this, so I hope I'm doing it right. The main reason we came to you is because friends told us that um, there might be a way that you might be able to expedite things. Absolutely. Once we contact the birth mother, I'll handle the county filings, agency filings. The no, no. Uh, you're talking about paperwork. I'm talking about the paper in my wallet. Let's say on top of your fee, if I gave you an extra 5,000 pieces of paper, well, let's just say, That would place you on a waiting list. OK, I see. What about 10,000? The middle of the list. Then 20 ought to put us solid in the top spot. It ought to. How much more would it cost to have a child by this afternoon? That, that's a highly irregular request. Why the hurry? A cardiologist has told me that my mother's on a deathbed. And to be able to present her with a grandson before she passes away would be worth 50,000 to me. 50,000? A boy. Sure, that's free of charge. Deal. Not here. When I hand you your dream, then you can pay for it. Cash wrapped in newspaper? I have a child in mind. It'll take me some time to get the birth certificate ready. Meet me at Westside Park, 4 o'clock. Remember, you're here because you're the only one who can positively identify Matthew. So when you see the baby, say, he's so beautiful, then I'll know we have him. I almost completely lost it in that lawyer's office. Just hang in there, Denise, a little while longer. You're doing great. Here he comes now. Oh, my God. That's the woman who stole Matthew. OK, OK, she's going to know you. So uh, you stay here, and I'll bring the baby over. Nice day in the park. Beautiful. Uh, Christine's so excited, she can barely stand it. Can I have him? Oh, right. Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Harrison. But remember, there's no warranty with that. Apologize profusely. Please! Excuse us, ladies. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Nothing. Sorry. It's like she was beamed up or something. Mary Potter, 
I'd know those dark roots anywhere. Now, where's Matthew Bradford? You know that child is sick. If you don't help us now, and the boy dies, it won't only be kidnapping, it'll be murder. He's been sick since we got him. And when he got worse, we brought Michael here. Matthew. Yes. Matthew. Please try and understand. We couldn't have kids. So when we went to Stevens, we knew that he could expedite things. But we never knew this. He may have been wrong, but we weren't. As a father, I understand the need to have children. But you didn't know about Stevens because you didn't want to know. No, no, we, we thought he had contacts with poor kids in, in Kentucky or wherever, that everyone would benefit from the deal. We never thought we were going to put people through this. We didn't know the baby was kidnapped. Court will have to decide that. Officer Kelly will take you down for questioning. You have a beautiful son. hope you put Stevens and Potter away forever for what they did to those people. For what they did to me. We connected Mary Potter to at least nine other counts over the past three years. She's gone from one medical clinic to another looking for families who didn't have the means to raise a fuss. What about Stevens? <sighs> We found him through an illegal search. That evidence is inadmissible. What does that mean? He walks. For whatever it's worth, the investigation will probably discredit him publicly. He might even be disbarred from the implications. That's not enough. We got what counts. Is he gonna be okay? Well, he's one sick little boy, but he's a fighter. You give him a few days and he'll be fine. It's uh, a little strange that we work as a team to be successful. But most of the awards and commendations are uh, presented to individual offices. Well, this is one time that I want to say to you as a team, as one unit, how undeniably proud I am of the Eastbridge Police Department. <laughs> So you did walk from the Smithsonian to the Lincoln Memorial? I'm glad you're having a good time. You brought us here. <sighs> he seems to have taken a trip himself to dreamland. Hey, listen, David. Bring your father back something special. And you be careful, OK? I love you. 